who makes up the biotech industry and why are they so powerful in influencing the media and the government? I've been following them for a long time. Why? It's hard to say, but I'll tell you some of their tactics. Monsanto's the, the big dog. They were purchased by Bayer. Uh, Dow and DuPont merged. Syngenta was bought by ChemChina. BASF is another one. These are the traditional ones that produce the GMO crops. But now the biotech industry has all sorts of new people, new groups that are trying to create genetically modified insects, Oxitec out of the UK. Or um, there's genetically modified salmon, Aqua Bounty. Uh, so we have these new types of GMOs with new, new groups. Um, but if you look at the, like the Monsanto influence, uh, Henry Miller, who was a very pro-GMO person within the FDA, somehow state made the statement that was picked up by the New York Times. He said that the, that the regulatory agencies have done everything that Big Ag has asked them to do and told them to do. Big Ag meaning Monsanto. Their, their influence in Washington has been legendary. They make financial contributions to both sides, the Democrat and Republican. They have tremendous dollars spent on lobbying. Um, they have, they've been focusing on politics, farmers, academia, and media. Those are the primary focus. And they have like public relations firms that will rate different reporters and reward those that, that report positively and attack those that don't. I've made this very clear in my book how they did that with GMOs, with bovine growth hormone. Um, they're pretty aggressive. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine, Carrie Gillum, who's talked at this at Truth About, Real Truth About Health before. She said they tried intimidated, intimidation tactics on her, and were probably trained in them, and tried to get her kicked off the, the beat because she was writing for Reuters and exposing the truth. So they have aggressive tactics. They had relationships with the defense industry. Uh, they have um, pretty bold, amazing um, negative campaigns that we wouldn't think would be possible now. Just completely blatant violation of ethics, blatant violation of science, and they get away with it. You know, when they, when they were doing research on Roundup to see if it was absorbed by human skin, they used a human cadaver, which is typical, 10% absorbed, 3.3 times the allowable level, never reported it to the EPA, cut the skin off a cadaver, baked it in an oven, froze it, then applied the Roundup, it was absorbed. Almost none. So that's what they reported. They didn't say that they baked it so, and, and froze it so it was leather-like. They pretended. Completely blatant fraud. And uh, oftentimes there's a, there's a uh, revolving door between Monsanto and various regulatory agencies and the executive branch. The person in charge of FDA policy that created the policy on GMOs and their, and their bovine growth hormone was a former Monsanto attorney, later Monsanto vice president, later FDA food czar. Um, there was the administrator of the EPA, William Ruckelshaus. He was, uh, on, became on Monsanto board. For Mickey Cantor, the former US trade representative, Monsanto's board. So many people back and forth between various regulatory agencies and different aspects of the executive branch. And even in the, even in the legal side, in the courts, Clarence Thomas was an attorney for Monsanto. Another guy who was an attorney for, on record for Monsanto never released that information, took on a, he was a judge, took on a case that was against Monsanto and denied a class action so it dissolved, and only the New York Times reported and revealed to everyone that he actually had been an uh, a, a attorney of record for Monsanto.